I'm going to make a little cat sculpture. It's a very simple, whimsical cat. First, I'm taking my lump of clay, just kind of smacking it around a little bit, rolling it around in my hands, getting rid of all the really deep creases. When you roll it around, kind of smoothing it in your palms, it's amazing how that helps to take care of and get rid of eliminating all the deep creases and lines. So now it's going to stand up like so. I'm going to define, use my finger to kind of define the chin. Just kind of rolling it around. There we go. That's where the chin will be. I'll smooth this up. And I like to just draw upward little peaks, little triangles to form the ears. Do that again with this hand. Kind of just draw it upward in an angle, kind of in a peak. Oh, there's a crease that I don't like. There we go. Get rid of that and just kind of form those ears, the little pointy ears. Then I pat this down towards the snout Now, what I've always noticed about cats is they tend to have a little V line coming from the ears going towards their nose. So I'm using my little feather texture brush. It's a wire brush that's used for scoring and slipping clay together, scratching and wetting it to attach it. I like to use it to add texture to my sculptures too. Just a very simple sculpture, easy enough to do with kids. Define the neck a little bit more. Let's look and see. Oh goodness, it looks like some strange alien character. Do we need to make the ears a little tinier? There, that looks better. I just brought the ears forward a little bit more to make it more, more cat-like. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to take it and define where the front legs would be. I'm just using the handle of one of my tools. It could be, you could use a pencil too because that defines the front legs. There we go. There, it gives it some shadowing there, dimension. Okay, so now I like to use a pencil tip, just about, you know, anything that you have with a blunt pointy edge to shape some little eye sockets. Make sure they're even. Tiny little beads of clay, preferably the same size. That's my recommendation. Sometimes they have to make about three or four to make sure that they are the same size. Those look like they are. Now I'm gonna use a needle tool to drop a few drips of water into the eye sockets. Put the eyes in there. There we go. Now a clean needle tool will make the little pupils nicely. These little straight lines they have. Okay. And they have a little triangular nose. I always like to use the tips of my fingers together to make that tiny little triangle. The nose is also pretty small, so I'm gonna use the needle tool to kind of scratch and wet that little nose in place. Let me see what you look like. Not too bad. Okay, so then you can define little whiskers. The needle tool is so straight and narrow that it's really easy to use that to make really straight, wispy whiskers. So cute, huh? Then, just make a little fun tail, rolling out a little snake. That's a little excessive, maybe. Take some of that off, there we go. And then decide where you want it sticking out. Scratch and wet it. Now this is earthenware clay and this sculpture 
is a little thick for firing in the kiln. That clicking you hear, that clicking is my kiln firing right now. So if I had this cat in my kiln, it would be likely to blow up because it is so thick. So to prevent it from blowing up, I'm going to take the handle of one of my tools, I'm gonna to stick it up inside, and I'm going to hollow it out so easily with the handle. I'm not wrecking any of the shape at all. I'm just hollowing it out, popping any air bubbles that could be in there, opening it up so that it's easier to dry up all the way through, through all that thickness. And now it's not going to be as likely to blow up in the kiln. There we go. As long as I dry this out completely before it goes in the kiln to fire, it's going to be fine. There's your cat. Thanks for watching.